Good evening, we're back with more Marvel Champions, and this evening will be a card review of the Nebula Hero Pack. This is the first Hero Pack of cycle number four, the first Hero Pack after the Mad Titans Shadow Campaign Box. So, what we're looking for in a hero, we want to know how high is the hero's ceiling, their power ceiling, and how quickly can they ramp up to that. And I would say that all of the galaxy's most wanted heroes, all the heroes from the galaxy's most wanted cycle, I found a little underwhelming with the possible exception of Venom. Venom was decent, Venom has potential, but the others I found disappointing to various degrees. Those Star Lord and Gamora are okay. They're like uh, BB plus heroes, but. Overall, a disappointing cycle. Did like Mad Titan Shadow though. Mighty Avengers and the White Tiger Ally are great cards. So let's see what this cycle brings. Nebula has the standard six hand size, nine hit points. Cybernetic Upgrades is her ability. Response after you play a Technique Upgrade, draw two cards. Okay, seems similar to her boss. The, the Nebula scenario, who made use of different technique upgrades. So after you play a technique upgrade, draw two cards. That'll be good at least to do on round one. Probably won't use it too much after that, but it'll be good on round one. Nebula has two, two, two stats, that's good. Forced response after your turn begins, resolve the special ability on each technique upgrade you control. Then discard each technique upgrade resolved this way. Interesting that it's forced. Okay, we'll have to withhold judgment until we see the special abilities on each technique upgrade. Gamora is her hero specific ally. 3 cost 2, 2 stats, 3 health. After you play Gamora, choose a technique upgrade you control, then resolve its special ability. Okay. Uh, we'll have to see what the technique upgrades do, then we can see how good Gamora is. Nebula's ship, which was a pain in the neck in the Nebula scenario. The two cost support exhaust Nebula's ship to generate a wild resource. So it's the standard resource generator that every hero gets. Cutthroat Ambition, one cost upgrade. While Nebula is in hero form, her attacks gain piercing and overkill. So you get piercing and overkill for one round, but then you switch. Then at the beginning of your next turn, you resolve the special ability and then you discard the upgrade. So on the turn you play it, you get piercing and overkill and then next turn you get remove three threat for one cost. Uh, if you can make use of the piercing, this is good. If you can't, it's pretty meh. It's not that good. If all you can do is remove three threat and you paid one cost and you lost this card from your hand in order to do that, it's not that good. But if you can take advantage of the piercing or maybe the overkill, then uh, then it's a good upgrade. You get two of those. Evasive maneuvering, one cost upgrade. While in hero form, Nebula ignores the guard keyword, the patrol keyword, and the crisis icon. Well. Situationally, that flexibility is nice, but not very often. Typically, we're wanting to clear the board of all side quests and, uh, and minions. So, guard isn't that relevant, patrol or crisis aren't that relevant anyway. So that flexibility I don't really give any value to. The special is choose to either stun or confuse an enemy, so this is a decent value card. If we're looking at a hero, though, that never leaves cards on the table, these are all essentially events, delayed events, and that they don't stay on the table and give you value every turn, making them more and more and more efficient as the game goes on. If, if this hero is entirely centered around techniques, then what we're looking at is a hero that really doesn't build up power over the course of the game, except for her resource generator, which practically every hero gets. What we're looking at is a hero that what you get up front from her is what you're always going to get. She never gains power. And that means if she's not super overpowered up front, then she's not going to be an elite hero. 
and so far this is not a super overpowered upfront type of hero. The value that you get from this upgrade is adequate. The value that you get from the first upgrade we looked at can be okay, but not exceptional, and it also can be kind of underwhelming. So what we're looking at so far is um, a hero that really doesn't bring anything except for thematic, her theme. She brings her theme to the table, but doesn't really... Well, she's not going to be a, one of the S-tier heroes that we turn to to beat difficult scenarios. So far, we're only five cards in. Let's keep going. Unyielding Persistence, a one-cost upgrade. While in hero form, Nebula gets plus one, plus one, and gains Stalwart. So you can get rid of a stun or a confuse off of yourself. Special give Nebula a tough status card. Okay. This is a decent value card. It's not exceptional, but it's above average. I like it. Situationally, it could be very good. Situationally, it could be exceptional. If you use it to get rid of a stun or a confuse off of yourself, then use a basic attack or a basic thwart and then get a tough status card, that's that's very good. But it's not that going to be that often that you're able to, to use all of that. So most of the time it's going to be okay, but not exceptional. If you can't use your thwart, then it's adequate, but yeah. So I guess its floor is pretty decent, but its ceiling isn't that high. It, its ceiling is very good, but the situation in which you'll get it to that level isn't going to be that common because often you'll have this and you won't have be stunned or confused and you won't want to hang on to it until you are because hanging on to cards is generally bad unless they're really, really strong. Weapons Master, one cost upgrade while in hero form, Nebula gains retaliate, so she's going to get retaliate for one turn which may or may not come into play. Deal four damage to an enemy, that's okay. Nothing special, but it's okay. We're not looking at a, a hero with a really exceptional ceiling though. That's becoming clear. At least not so far. We'll look at the back half of her cards. Wide Stance, another technique, one cost upgrade. While Nebula is in hero form, reduce the amount of damage she takes from each attack by one. Look at the top three cards of the encounter deck, discard one and put the others back in any order. Okay, that's above average. Not exceptional, but above average. Depending on the card that you discard, it could be exceptional if you discard something really heinous. But uh, yeah, we're looking at an above average champion, above average hero, uh, but nothing exceptional and not a ramping hero. So not gonna be like the hero that you bring to heroic one or heroic two quests. Or like against Loki, I'd expect her to struggle because Loki really ramps hard since he gains a lot of attachments over the course of the game. We will test her against Loki though. Not the campaign version, but just base Loki on expert mode and we'll see how it goes. Combat ready, a zero cost event, alter ego action. Choose one. Shuffle up to two technique upgrades from your discard pile into your deck. Discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard a technique upgrade. Put that upgrade into play, then resolve its special ability. Okay, well having to discard until you find a technique is bad. Uh, drawing a technique and then putting it into play is good. That could be worth a lot. But it is an alter ego action. So you can keep your techniques around for more than one round if you want to. So you could take advantage of this reducing damage by more than one for more than one round if you flip to alter ego. So then you wouldn't start the turn in your hero form and you wouldn't discard your technique. But in solo in uh, solo play, we don't really. If a hero requires you to flip to alter ego in order to take full advantage of them, that's a negative against that hero. Because we don't want to be an alter ego very much, if at all. Like in my Iron Man playthroughs of my Iron Man playthrough of Mad Titans campaign, 
I think after the initial being in alter ego form of the first and second turns, I wasn't in alter ego form at all. Maybe once the entire campaign, apart from those first two turns in each scenario. And that's ideal in solo. So if a hero requires you to flip to alter ego to take full advantage of them, that's bad. But combat ready is strong if you're willing to flip to alter ego to do it. Lethal intent, X cost event, choose up to X technique upgrades you control, resolve each of their special abilities in the order of your choice. Well, for practically how many techniques are you going to be able to do that with? They typically cost one. So you have five cards in your hand, you use two of them to get out one technique two of them to get out another and then this is your fifth card and you can't play it so are you ever going to be able to do more than one special ability in a turn unless you switch to alter ego it'll be hard it'll be difficult you may need like extra cards in your hand or something like that otherwise it'll be tough you'll need her resource generator out that'll help but if you could get, if you could play two special abilities for two cost, that's good. It's above average for sure. It's almost exceptional. But you have to do some setup to make that happen. Or you have to flip to alter ego, which is not desirable in solo. And you get three of those. So overall, we're looking at an above average hero, but nothing special. I could recommend her for thematic reasons or if her aspect or basic cards turn out to be really strong. But uh, we're not looking at a hard ramping hero like Iron Man or Doctor Strange ramps up pretty well with Sorcerer Supreme with his cape. And the Eye of Agamotto. Um, Captain America not really. Ant-Man ramps up pretty well though. We're not looking at a hero like that though. So we're not looking at an S tier hero here. We're probably looking at a hero roughly equivalent to uh, Gamora. And maybe a little bit worse than Venom. So she's at the power level of the other Guardians of the Galaxy. I would say. Let's take a look at her aspect and basic cards. So we get justice cards with her and the first justice ally is Eros. Two cost, two thwart, one attack, two health. After you play Eros from your hand, confuse a minion for each science resource you use to pay for him. Well, we're not an alter ego very much, so minions don't scheme a lot. It doesn't have a lot of value, this responsibility. And without it, he's not that good. So you really need to be in a situation where you need to confuse minions. You need like a two or a three threat minion, and you need to have a situation where you want to be in alter ego. So not very common. I don't think I would run Eros. Wraith. Three cost, one thwart, three attack, which costs two consequential damage. When a boost card is turned face up, exhaust Wraith and deal one damage to him to cancel that card's boost effect. Eh, that's not that good. To make this decent, you'd have to cancel like two three boost effects or something like that if you could do that he's pretty good but I think he would sit there for a while waiting for that to happen and you wouldn't be able to really use his attack or thwart if you do that he's kind of over costed for what he provides so you really need to use his hero interrupt and you'll need him to wait around and if you can use him twice to cancel a three boost effect Actually, you can cancel the effect, so you can cancel some of the nasty things like cards that play themselves off a of boost. Yeah. In that situation, he's quite good. If you can use him for those heavy boosts, 
You don't want to really use him for a two boost or a one boost, where it's just adding two damage or one damage. But if you can use him to get more value than that, then he's quite good. We might mess around with Wraith and Justice. I don't think he's like so good that he's worth buying a hero pack for. But he's a he's good. He's a nice addition. I think I'd run him, even though you have to be patient with him and. If you play him late game, you may not actually get that much value for him while you're waiting around to use his effect. Venom ally. Yeah, all the guardians have gotten added in as allies, but the others were all basic. Venom's the first one that isn't. He's four cost, two thwart, three attack, takes two consequential damage while there is no threat on the main scheme. Reduce all consequential damage Venom takes by one. Well, if he's always taking just one consequential damage when he attacks, you'll get nine attack out of him, then a chump block. That's good. That's very good. It's not exceptional, but it is good. Now, how often are you going to be able to do that? It's hard to keep all threat off the main quest in Expert or Heroic. It's depending on the scenario, though, and depending on the hero that you're playing, it's not impossible. But if you're keeping all threat off the main quest, you may not need an ally, ally like Venom. He may be like a win more card. And he's expensive. So I think he's good. He's nothing exceptional. We're saying that a lot about these cards in the Nebula hero pack. She seems roughly equivalent to the Gamora hero pack to me right now. Which makes sense, they are sisters. Justice served, one cost upgrade after you thwart and remove the last threat from a scheme. Discard justice served, ready your hero. A one cost for a for a ready isn't that good. It's one cost plus this card from your hand. And readying is typically only valued at like two. You get two thwart or you get two attack, so this isn't very good. And you have a caveat before you can even use it. One way or another. And you have a caveat before you can even use it. One way or another, zero cost event. Search the encounter deck for a side scheme. Reveal that side scheme, draw three cards. Okay, it says, so it's similar to that Thor event, or there's a aggression event where you can discard until you find a minion. Uh, it really depends on the side scheme. If you could get a side scheme that, like early in the game, where you deal with it with a single thwart or something like that, then this is very good. But if you have to use multiple characters to thwart, If you get like a four threat side scheme, this is okay. Anything more than that and it's pretty bad. Three thwart side scheme is fine. If you get one with a win defeated effect, this is probably bad. So it's high variance. I don't think I will run it. Unless I have like additional cards that play off of side schemes. But uh, otherwise, I don't think so. It's too risky. It's high variance and its ceiling isn't that high when it's good. Determination, we've seen before. Power of Justice, Brains over Brawn, two cost event. After your hero makes a basic thwart, deal damage to an enemy's hero equal to your hero's thwart. Uh, that's a two cost event. That does not seem good at all. You pay two plus this card to deal like two damage. Maybe three. That's pretty terrible. I, I don't think I would ever do that. Yeah, I don't think so. Get a Cosmo we've seen before. Nowhere we've seen before. Daughters of Thanos. It's a team up that we've seen before. It's excellent if you can use it. I've found team team ups difficult to do in solo. 
very difficult. But if you're running like a Gamora Nebula team, which will be an above average hero team, not exceptional, but they'll be above average. They'll be thematic. They'll be fun. And Daughters of Thanos definitely makes sense then to draw three cards. Each of each player would play a Daughters of Thanos, I think. First aid, energy, genius, strength. And then we've got energy spear. One cost upgrade attached to a guardian ally. Max one per ally. Attached ally gets plus two attack and its attacks gain piercing. Well, I still have not seen an upgrade for an ally that I liked in solo because it's really hard to keep the allies around. Unless you're playing protection and you can heal and in that case there's no ally attachments and protection so this does not this does nothing for me plus two attack plus the piercing um, I mean it's a decent amount of damage if you could get an out an ally and then get two attacks out of it you get four damage for one cost and piercing I mean it's that's strong and there are some strong allies in aggression I might play this card Maybe this will be the card that changes my mind about ally upgrades. This one provides good value. If you intend to attack with an ally already, an extra 4 attack for 1 cost. It's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. And, the, and then plus the piercing. This could be very strong value. I'd probably run it if I was running a lot of aggression allies. Guardians of the Galaxy. Two cost support. I can't remember if we've seen it before. If each of your characters has the Guardians trait, I think we have seen this before. This card gains response after you play an upgrade on an ally, draw one card. Uh, you'd have to draw at least two cards, so... I mean, this is significantly worse than the Mighty Avengers. I would ten times over rather have the Mighty Avengers because we don't really like to run upgrades on allies, the energy spear notwithstanding. The leadership upgrades on allies and solo aren't that good, so you have to run bad cards to make this card good, and I'm not a fan of that. Defensive training, exhaust this card and remove one training counter from it. It starts with two. Choose a protection event in your discard pile and shuffle it, shuffle it into your deck. I don't really think that's worth anything. And it's an alter ego action? Yeah, no. I can't imagine a, a scenario in which I would use this unless there is some future combo coming where you really want to get cards from your discard pile back into your deck. That You get nothing up front for the cost of this card. And you have to be an alter ego action to even remove use the effect that's there. I don't think this is good at all. Honorary Guardian. Play only if your identity has the Guardian trait. Attached to a friendly character, max one per character. Attached character gets plus one hit point and gains the Guardian trait. This isn't good. Similar to the Honorary Avenger one. It, it, I see this is a thematic card. A fun thematic card. But not a very good one. Yeah, you can use... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy with characters that aren't Guardians if you give them Honorary Guardian, but I don't think that's worth a card, a one of your valuable hand slots. So uh, I, I don't think I would run this similar to Honorary Avenger. Daughters of Thanos, Inferiority Complex, so that's it. Let's take another look at one way or another. Three cards for a side scheme. If you have an overabundance of, of thwarting, this could be good. I just don't think that happens very often. I think a lot of the time this is a card you can't do until you're set up to remove the side scheme right away. And if you're already set up to remove side schemes right away, you probably don't need this card. 
So it's probably a win war card. Yeah, even on second look, I don't I don't think this is good. Overall, this Euro pack, it seems like a fun Euro pack to play. Nebula seems like a fun hero. But not a really strong one, because she doesn't have the ability to ramp up really at all. Except for Nebula's ship, and that's a one-off. So, I don't think we're looking at a hero for the most difficult content in the game. I think we're looking at a hero that would be fun to play combined with Gamora, and that deck would be reasonably strong and able to beat a lot of content, because this is an above average hero, maybe a, a B, B plus hero, similar to Gamora. Maybe a little bit worse than Venom. That is my opinion of Nebula, and the aspect cards are nothing to write home about, so if you're not buying Nebula for thematic reasons, or just to have fun, I think you may be a little bit disappointed by her power because she does not advance the plot, so to speak. This isn't going to be like a more powerful hero than the ones we already have, or even one that will match the power of the heroes that we already have. So, thank you for watching.